Okay. All right, we're live. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Danger Cast. I'm your host, Danger. Sitting in today as my co-host is Owen Oldaker. Howdy. And uh, we have a special guest all the way from Colorado via Skype, uh, Walden Cox. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, and uh, I think it's going to be a good spicy podcast. Uh, I'm excited. So, um, <laughs> yeah, man, it's going to be good. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been throwing, you know, all that stuff? Well, it's an interesting story. I started like a lot of people when I was a kid, just kind of picking up my pocket knife or whatever I could find and throwing it. I yeah. just get all excited when you get a crappy ninja star. But then, you know, <laughs> started playing regular sports, I guess, quote, regular sports, and didn't ever really take it seriously. And then uh, my wife actually got me into it. Um, several, uh, uh-oh, I'm getting a call from my son. That's hilarious. Uh, oh, no. That's all right. I'll call him back. It's fine. Give me one second here. No problem. All right. Uh, so basically, she got me into it as a pastime about 15 years ago. Uh, and... Uh, it was interesting because at that point I didn't take it very seriously either. Just kind of goofed off and was like, okay. But at that point I was also a touring musician, uh, playing in three or four different signed metal bands at a time, just kind of traveling around making loud noises. And so it was just some <laughs> kind of every once in a while did. And then, uh, at one point went through a divorce and, uh, really kind of dove into the whole idea of ax and knife throwing it just against the side of my garage and completely destroyed my garage door over the course of the yeah. summer, which was <laughs> rad. It was good. It was good therapy, though. But just essentially about, you know, 10 years ago, that happened and I just sort of started throwing and then decided, oh, I better take old fence pieces or something and just find whatever target I could find. And then eventually started building uh, a thing in the middle of the yard, which has grown into that massive wall of insanity out there over the years. Yeah, that just started out as one post and uh, eventually got huge. Really? But uh, yeah, just kind of started goofing off and throwing and doing whatever. And then a few years back, my current wife said, hey, let's go to Bad Axe and go throw some axes for Amanda's birthday. And I say, why the hell would we go play pay money to go throw axes at a wall when we can just do it right here? And she's exactly. like, yeah, exactly. I still feel the same way, by the way, even though the story branches off from there. But um, so I went in and... Uh, said okay we'll go be social i'll go through access with a bunch of hot girls sounds great and so we went in there and you know lo and behold i'm throwing from 12 feet away i'm like what the hell is this this is weird and easy like okay and so our coach just so happened to be the third ranked thrower in the watl in 2018 at that point and he's like holy nice. shit you're pretty good at this you ever think about competing or anything like that and i'm like dude i didn't even know other people did this at this point i just thought yeah. it was some i was just some weird kid and uh, he's like, nah, you should really give it a try. And so uh, that first season and every season since in the WATL, I've qualified for the world championships. And then uh, because of that and finding out that other people do this, I was like, oh, I should make videos. And then I started doing videos of the nonsense I do and people kind of liked it. So yeah, it, just all of this, everything that's happened for me in the world of throwing has been entirely an accident. So <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Super fun, though. I've never had so much fun in my life. Like, yeah, even as a uh, professional musician, I got to say, like, I prefer to throw things all day. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love music, man. I'm constantly making stuff. I was recording some vocals right before this. But uh, really? and, like, um, just, you know, like, you just kind of find a Zen state and you just kind of flow and you just become, yes. I hate to say one with the blade, but whatever. It's kind of what it is. But you just kind yeah. of find a place to find your own peace you know and like for me music i've it's done it for so long that it's like it's yeah. still fun still great it's just i don't look at it the same way anymore you know to me i look at it more as just like a creative outlet and not like i guess it's the same as throwing just a creative outlet i just don't really care about the whole performing side of music anymore where i'd rather go out and get in front of people and do dumb dangerous trick shots instead <laughs> <laughs> so did you uh did you start off with knives or axes kind of both at the same time the reason the yeah. axe thing took off was just because of I, the first league i found myself in was watl so it just was kind yeah. of an accident and the name was you know kind of catchy enough to get stuck with so <laughs> 
can you um, can you tell us a little bit about those axe throwing tournaments? I've never been to one. Um, they seem like they're very different than the knife throwing tournaments we go to. Well, that's the thing is I'm trying to get some to your guys' knife throwing tournaments. So like uh, Max Stoughton, a very very close friend of mine, was at uh, your last Andrew Fress throw. And yeah. So and then our throw that we were uh, participating in with our trick shot nonsense was two weeks after that. So I got to hear firsthand a lot about what had happened, and I was like, oh, that sounds so much more my style. But um. Oh man, they're they're very regimented, right? There's only three disciplines: and it's hatchet, big axe, and then duels hatchet, which was by far the most fun. Um, but it's really like it's a set distance at a set target, and it's basically just darts. It's you know whoever misses first, you know, essentially. And you know, there's something to be said about it. They're fun social events. There's a lot of good people who go to them, and you know, it's a lot harder to hit that damn dot every time than people want to think it is. But at the same time, yeah, the challenge of, of staying interested is what I have, you know, like for me, I'd rather goof off and go do stuff more variable, like the whole instinctive throwing, you know, like throwing from 12 feet at a hatchet and 15 with the big ax all day long just gets too repetitive. That's all. I, that's kind of how I feel. I would think about it. And, you know, um, when I first started throwing, I, re- I wanted to be a competitive thrower and I wanted to do really well. Yeah. And that's what I practiced for years. And then now I just, I have more fun now just going out in my garage and just, I don't even have a plan when I go out there. I just, I'll figure it out. Yep. I have more fun that way. Plans are for suckers, man. <laughs> <laughs> just go with the flow. Exactly. That's kind of how I look at music so how- too, for that matter. You know, that's why yeah. I don't like to perform anymore so much. Is like everyone wants to hear the same song, and I'm like, I'm over that song. I want to play this weird noise now. So, uh, like, yeah. if people can accept my weird jazz improv nonsense, then I, then I'm down. But otherwise, other than that, like, I'm good. <laughs> so how many um, how many competitors are at one of those big uh, tournaments? Okay, they can vary, right? There's di- totally different, like different levels of these things. Uh, like the one we went to last that, uh, angry wood in Oklahoma was pretty big. There was probably between all the different disciplines, somewhere between four and 500 competitors. And Damn. yeah, they're huge, but then there's some uh, smaller ones that will attract like 60 to 80, you know, and those ones, they're yeah. typically the prize pools, a little smaller, all that kind of stuff. But those ones sure. somehow tend to gravitate like the really good throwers. And so like, the, the crazy insane amount of talent in one room is just like great this is gonna be awesome <laughs> like i'm gonna lose all yeah. fast and just go out back and smoke <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh for the most part man like they, they're typically over 100 uh pretty consistently um this year's world axe throwing championship will have somewhere a little over 200 maybe 250 total but then next year they're planning on doubling that. And that's just for that ESPN, you know, coverage and whatnot. And I get what they're yeah. doing. And then, you know, it's, it is what it is. And it, it's a thing for me to compete in. But I, like I said, my interests are, are uh, very rapidly changing as far as competitive sure. throwing goes. So I, don't, um, I recommend it what's the deal with- to start with people who only are interested in axes, but their little branch off of their uh, WKTL, in my opinion, is something to be avoided. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what's I got I got. Yeah, we'll get into that here soon. No worries. Uh, Whenever you're ready. <laughs> what is what's the deal with the uh, the jerseys? You have to wear a jersey. You do. They pay for them. So you don't have to buy them or anything like that but because of the nate look if you actually go back to the 2018 uh watc and watch it on youtube you'll notice everyone's just wearing t-shirts right but uh they're usually axe throwing branded t-shirts and all that kind of stuff but it's the deal that got made with espn essentially because there's one company that provides those and so yeah you gotta wear jerseys unfortunately which is dumb i got myself to be uh a, a sponsored venue with, with that wall outside and so yeah. i'm at the point where i can actually make my own jersey at least so <laughs> when i show oh, up that's i cool. can be rocking my own style at least so yeah your own colors and everything yeah all you know it's all black and white a little bit of red for the blood splatter <laughs> but you know <laughs> i keep it pretty simple yeah. man i like I, my my uh sensibilities are pretty easy to figure out <laughs> So, did you just change venues 
weren't you working at one certain place and now you're somewhere else Actually, now? Actually, I have changed venues a few times. Um, I, I started oh, really? off at a place called Axe Whooping. And I left with them on good terms, and then I went to go work for Bad Axe. They're, you know, the kind of the big dogs in the axe throwing, uh, recreational axe throwing venue game, right? And I, I recently parted ways with them, and that is a an interesting story. But uh, actually, at this point, I'm currently only working for myself. I am uh, working on getting my own business going, getting my own. Uh, my own venue, which I'm not going to That's be. What's up. I'm just going to do my own thing completely. Have all of my own stupid games, uh, affiliated yeah. with all kinds of different leagues, and you know, pretty much leave WATL out of it. Other, come do everything but them where I'm at, you know. And uh, yeah, and it's it is sort of by design. I have uh, issues, I guess you'd say, with the whole thing because for me, bad. I don't know how well known it is, but Bad Axe, the corporation also owns the WATL. And so the way I, oh. so those two things are go hand in hand. And so the way I was treated recently kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. And so, yeah. you know, I'm going to finish out the season, hopefully go win the world Jack axe throwing championship, take their prize money and then go off somewhere else. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of my plan. <laughs> but you know, if I don't win, whatever, and who knows, maybe I'll go back and do uh, still compete, but do only trick shots just to make a mockery of their sport or something like that. I don't know. So, uh, do you care to elaborate on the story of why you? Uh, oh, got fired? I, I'll elaborate a little bit, just because I'm not sure okay. how public it's all really been made, but some of it has. Um, so, I was hosting a, I guess you'd call it a tag along event at the Angry Wood Open, right? So this year out in Oklahoma. Was that the outdoor event? Yeah, it's the outdoor event. And so our event was called yeah. the Berserker Circus, right? And it's kind of our little team name for all our weird tricksters that do mainly ax throwing trick shots just because, again, that's the world I started in. But we've been sure. branching out. Name, we got like the guys like uh, Fling and Fernandez and Cody Cooper, those guys, you know, they live close oh, yeah. to me as well. So they're close friends, but we're, you know, we're trying to be not exclusive. But anyway. We got to do an event the night before, which was whatever the hell I wanted to do. And I thought, oh, wow, that's going to be cool. And so we had some trick shot competitions and we, we made up a couple of crazy games. And then I did some raffles. And uh, long, long story short, the three different people who won the three different prototype uh, WKTL knives that were donated as prizes all happened to be knife makers. And all of them... <laughs> Wow. had political issues would you say with some of the ways yeah. the wktl works so all of three of those knives ended up in the middle of the oklahoma river <laughs> all that was caught on That's video nice. the next morning a video came out on yeah. youtube all about the wktl knives getting thrown in the river and all that shit and then i next thing you know i'm getting a phone call from the opera head operations at bad accent watl like what the hell and i'm like dude First of all, those were out of my hand. Somebody just won those. That was their property. Second, yeah, it's secondly, not like you made them do it. Secondly, I didn't do it. Thirdly, yes, I didn't make them do it. Fourthly, I didn't really egg them on. And fourthly, <clears throat> take this as an opportunity to open a dialogue with your community to see why this just happened. And they decided not mm -hmm. to do that. The next thing you know, I didn't have a job at my part-time axe throwing job anymore, which is a bummer because I really do enjoy teaching people to throw things. It's very rewarding. Sure. But at the same time, like, yeah, don't care. Fuck them. <laughs> like, I'm moving on to my but own. But you could also do that at your house. Yeah, oh, I am going you know, to. Like, I still do, like, private good. lessons and things like that and teach my friends and all kinds of stuff. And, like, ultimately, I'm in this for the fun of it, man. I just happen to yeah. get enough people, like, thinking all the dumb handstand weird nonsense I'm doing is entertaining enough where people want to pay me for it, which is kind of wacky, honestly. <laughs> like, it is, yeah. But it's like, but, hey, um, I'll take it. So, yeah, the WKTL started, what was it, like April or May of this year yeah. when they announced it? Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I gave them a chance in the beginning. I, I was like, well, we'll see where this goes. You know, we gave them the benefit of the doubt. And then they started coming out with all, all that bullshit about you have to buy their knives. You have to throw their knives. You have to wear their jerseys. And... Or the, the, I guess the whole the first thing was the guard, yes. which we all know is a stupid, stupid thing. You know, we, there's several ways of getting around that. Yeah. But they, they're just forcing people to make them buy their own equipment and their equipment is junk. Yep. 
It sucks. 100%. That knife offends me. It's terrible. Oh, I got one for you. I've been saving one. Like, so when we do meet up, I'll make sure you have one so you can destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saving it. I just, oh. I've just been so lazy and busy. I haven't been able to mail anything out. Anyway, it's okay, man. Continue. <laughs> yeah, so I should never, I made a video, you know, like, we'll see where this goes and give him the benefit of the doubt. And then all that shit came out and I'm like, man, I never should have been that nice to him, you know? And they're just trying to strong arm what we already have going on. And, you know, the one dude made a comment saying we're trying to put knife throwing in the, in the limelight or, or whatever, or, or it's going to remain uh, dormant. Like it has for years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And you I know, it, it is, it is kind of uh, the, the ax throwing places. They really have it going on as far as organization and getting it out to the masses. And, but I don't think anybody in the knife throwing community or the or knife throwing world really cares. Like we all like where it's at right now. Yeah. You know, some people would like to see it grow and maybe get into the Olympics or something, which I'm not really, I don't really care if it does. I, I like it being like an obscure thing that not many Punk people rock do. like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I have mixed feelings about that, but we're doing fine. I mean, um, there, there is a little bit of disorganization within the the, the few um, organizations that exist right now. Like with with what I do with my throw, we're not really affiliated with any organization. Yeah. We just kind of pick and choose what we want to do. And we get feedback from the people that come and throw and we just choose to do whatever. You know, it's my throw. I'll do whatever I want. Exactly. We, As you should. We vaguely, we vaguely do what the International Knife Throwers Hall of Fame does. And it's... It's very similar. There's a couple things that we might tweak here and there, but it's a, it's familiar for everybody, so it's easier to understand. Yeah. And uh, yeah, th I don't know. Those those guys just really rub me wrong. Yeah, Mario, I agree. And, I even... and that's a that's why I've you know kind of started. Ten, uh, I, I I like to say I have nine toes out the door at this point. You know. Yeah. I'd have all ten out, but the season's not over, and I already you know I'm, I did pretty well. Might as well go try to see if I can win. <laughs> Other than that, like I don't so, care. <laughs> like, I'm over so it. you're still throwing under the WATL rules? Uh, for now, uh, the 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 fine. There's four seasons a year, so each each season has its own season, and the winter season just ended, and so that last thing for the season for the year in December is the actual World Championships for their league, and um. That's a pretty big cash prize for that. So like, I figure I qualified. I might as well go. <laughs> so, yeah. But other than that, man, I don't practice. I throw at this, like, you know, I throw at skulls that I spray paint on walls like that. That has no relevant practice to that tournament at all. So the fact that I can qualify for their world championship without ever practicing their game is, you know, it, I don't know, <laughs> like, it's, it's that's cool it's man too rote that's all it is isn't it it's just it's the same thing over and over and that's my issue with it it's just got to branch it out and uh yeah whatever i mean there's so many things that like we can do as a as a sport and I, the reason why i like what you do is you like you take what you want to do and see so the whole thing is is as more people get interested in this sport and start doing their own throws and then more people start going to more people and traveling more to do this, it'll start making its own organization. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. will find out what people really like. And that that's the way we can grow the sport naturally with the people who really want to do it and watch it grow. And then, you know, we trick shots are a big part of it. Honestly, in my opinion, they're sure. they're, they're the thing that, that draw the new eyes. Like they're the ones that get yes. the people who don't care about knife and ax throwing to stop and wait for a second and go, wait, what did I just see? And then they dive yeah. in, and the next thing you know, you got someone who wants to learn. And so, like, for me, all that nonsense is just bait to try to get more people to join the sport and to, to try to, yeah. uh, to grow the whole thing. Because as much as I get don't care about, like, Olympics either, I do think it would be a good thing to be able to get enough respect for our sport to even be considered. But, but I don't yeah. care. I don't care. I mean, one way or the other. Don't get me wrong. But it would be nice to get a little more clout because, I, ironically, I played the whole punk rock game and then went up throughout different realms of music. And I'm like, OK, there's there's merit to all of it. You just got to find what that merit is and then 
keep a hold of it, let everything else fall away, and eventually all these pieces will come together into something new. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential in this this world of sports that we have right now to make something really great. And, but I don't, I don't think it needs to be forced, and I don't think anybody needs to think that they have it nailed down because having an open mind is and being creative is the whole reason why this sport exists, man. Like this isn't like a basketball yeah. or a football. This is something that comes from our imagination and it needs to stay there. So, yeah, that, that's well said, man. And, uh, I think that too much organization and too many rules really, I don't know. It kind of pushes me away. Agreed. Like, <laughs> I, I like, the, you know, like at my throw, some people, some people were asking me, cause usually you have to throw a half spin, one spin, one and a half, two, two and a half and three yeah, for right. tomahawks or whatever. Yeah. And during the Euro throw, you just have to throw at that distance. Yeah. It doesn't matter how it rotates. Control, as long as all your it rotation. Sticks. Yeah. Right. Sure. So I allowed everybody, I was like, I don't care. You know, like if it gets to the point where you're winning all the tournaments, then we'll have a conversation about maybe we shouldn't do that or let you, but Agreed. I don't care. If, if somebody has got yeah. the game stacked, then you got to talk about it. Other than that. Sure. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Until that point, you know, yeah, it's all good. But hey, out of fairness, if one person can get to that point, other people can too. So, you know, sure. if somebody gets that much better, it should really just be motivating for everyone else to catch up. I mean, that's kind of that sports mentality, right? And so, uh, but you yeah, know, you can always do things like they do in golf and put a handicap on somebody. That way they can totally kick the shit out of someone and still technically lose because, you know, hey, like you got a handicap you have to beat too. Like you could always do it that way. I mean, I, I don't know anyone that has, and, but it might work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. I mean, it's worth trying at least, right? Like what the hell? That way you can even the playing yeah. field with some more, you know, some novice throwers with some more advanced throwers and have them all compete together more in a more fun way. But yeah, I mean, it might just backfire completely too. Who knows? <laughs> Is there, um, in axe throwing, is there an amateur and pro division? No. Or is everybody, because it's all one distance. Yeah, it's just all one thing. So, and there's no, yeah. they, they, some people do uh, women's tournaments and some people do children's tournaments, but the overall league is just one thing. Like, um, co ed, right? This, yeah, co ed. Uh, there, there's a little girl who's 10 years old who qualifies for worlds and she's a badass. And it's just like, yeah. hell yeah. And she throws against all these adults and it's amazing. She's great. And, um, her, her name's Ella. She rules. <laughs> that's fantastic. But, uh, that's awesome to hear. Yeah. It's, it, it, that's what I'm, that to me is the most exciting part is when little kids start getting into this, you know, like my, my son's pretty, he's kind of into it. <laughs> like he likes doing it, but at the, how old is your son? He's 11. So, but he's more into like music and, you know, playing video games, but whatever sure. who cares i was into that when i was a kid too so who cares it's fine <laughs> well you know what i found out is everybody that i've ever shown how to throw or taught or whatever yeah. everybody likes to throw yeah. everybody gets that that feeling but not everybody loves it the way that we do yes you know what i mean the people that stay uh you know organize events and travel and so yeah the, the more people we can get to love it the better off the community that's is. That's true. That's a very good point because yeah, getting people to watch is important, but getting people to like fall in love with it is very important for sure. Because yeah. that's what'll actually grow the sport. An audience is good, but more competitors is better. No, both. Sure. Both um, good. <laughs> and going back to what you said about the trick shots pulling people in, I, in my opinion, trick shots and fast draw is the future of the sport because it is exciting and fun to watch. You know, I'll be the first one to say it, regular rotational throwing and line by line, it's not the most exciting, man. I mean, unless you're really into it or you're really excited about watching a certain person throw, right. it's not very exciting. So those other side games and, and events, those are, those are, I mean, everybody was on their feet when we were doing fast draw this year, it was like, yeah, I watched it was electric, dude. Videos. <laughs> dude, it was so much fun. I've never That's, tried oh. it. I don't even have a fast draw knife, man. I need to get one. All you need is a, a sheath and it has to be attached to your belt. That's the only stipulation. Um, so I want to try to do fast draw axe, like get a good axe uh, sheath. See if I could do that. Like why the hell not? <laughs> yeah, you would, I was talking to someone about this the other day. It would need to be a, a drop leg. Yeah. 
and then the axe would have to be the head would be down yeah. and they would have to peel out yeah you know like the, the front of it would be all split open so you could peel it out the front oh because i was all thinking, cool. there, I, I was thinking kind of the opposite actually ironically okay i was thinking you have it more like here right so you got the head facing okay. backwards almost like you'd have it on a normal right. sheath but you'd actually grab yeah. it like this and come up underneath of the underhanded throw Oh, so it would resemble his uh, the, uh, Owens throw more than yours. Like that, that, that straight, yeah, that straight shot out of the straight sheath. from the sheath. Yeah. yeah, but at the same that's time, that's interesting. I never thought about that. Eh, I don't know. I, I was raised by a physicist, so I think about really, uh, yeah, yeah. Like well, one thing I like to tell people when I teach them is that you're doing all the math you used to ignore right now. <laughs> like, and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, this is all fucking, this is all angular momentum and like centrifugal force and self physics and math. This is all of what this is. And it, yeah. it's so much fun to, to like to break their brains a little bit with that. And, like the people who do <laughs> get cool. it, like, like all of a sudden something clicks and they just get better all of a sudden when they start realizing, yeah. oh, I think about it like that. Oh, wow. And you start to see something click in their heads. It's great. That's that's interesting that you said that. I've never thought about it like that before. Dude, it's so mathematical, man. This is straight up science. It's an art and a science together, which is to me, it's a lot like music, dude. It's a different form of heavy metal for me, and so yeah. and like it just really is. Like it's a, you can do anything you can put your mind to. Like as we've seen some of the insane shit that some of us have pulled off, dude. Like like I I can't even fathom some of the crap that I've seen other people do. Like. <laughs> Like, yeah. like, I when I, like when you were when doing the one with the, with the fan card and you fucking I, like what the hell was that dude that blew my <laughs> mind so hard <laughs> when i st when i started throwing i i looked up websites on the science of of rotational throwing right on and it helped tremendously and colette yeah she did some videos about the science and and, and rotation okay and i think i remember those yeah and that was that was fantastic and you know what speaking about the amazing things they've some of the trick shot guys have done and, and like Lee Molson and yeah, and, it's, a and you and, a and genius. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. He's fabulous. But it's, it's, it's amazing about once the lead guys, like you guys, I don't consider myself, I'm, I'm still following, but when you lead guys do these things, it's, it's funny how it does open people's minds. It's, it happens quick. Once to, you see someone else do it, it becomes much more possible. To show, show like the one-handed thing that Lee does with the can. And, yeah. and I, when I saw that, you you know, you have to catch people like, what the fuck did I just see? Yeah, right. And, and then I, ha I had to do it. I had to do it. That one's so that's, hard. That's what's, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's neat how you guys, the, 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 the extreme, the outer extreme guys that are just hardcore as fuck, you guys show other guys what's possible. And once you show them what's possible, then they can do it. And, and it's just, it's really cool to watch. It's right really cool to watch. Well, thank you. Man, every once in a while, I will hit one of the hardest trick shots I've ever done. And it took me a long time. You know, I persevered. I was... Uh, Hours and just, days, yep. <laughs> oh, just frustration. It's, it's so great when it happens. But then some, like, newer thrower that just started or whatever will do the same thing. Or I'm like, damn, dude, like... I mean, I don't know. It's people are learning fast. Yeah, they yeah. are very yes. fast. I find it yeah. crazy that somehow we're staying ahead of the curve still. Like that, that kind of blows my mind. I, 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 much, get, I get tagged in a, not by much, you're right. But I get tagged in this in somebody doing a one handed handstand axe throw video almost every day. And I'm just like, dude, that is, you were the first person to do it, right? I was. That's why I turned my logo into it. <laughs> okay. I, I thought so. Yeah. It's very popular now. Yeah. That's one of those yeah. ones though, that no one's ever tried to take the credit from me on that one, at least. Like they're like, no, this dude okay, did good. that. This guy got that. Like I, uh, I won a pretty major trick shot competition with that shot and I hadn't posted any videos cool. of my practicing it. So it would be a surprise. Nice. Uh, my buddy Scott Line uh, made that lo that Jordan style logo for me, and he says, "Okay, yeah, right before the the uh, trick shot competition starts, you change your logo to this because no one will notice till after. But as soon as they yeah. check, it'll already be that." And I'm like, "Oh God, pressure's on! I have to nail it." And That's like awesome. that entire trick shot competition, all 59 minutes of it's actually on my stories or my Instagram TV still, but at the very okay. end. But yeah, like it took me uh, two tries to nail the shot at a five and then everyone's like get a bullseye and i'm like i so i was like okay 
fuck, I should have just said no. But then I got a bullseye from the very next try, so that was cool. Badass. And then in the finals is when I pinned that full can of beer to the wall on the uh, third try. And that way that set the place <laughs> off. <laughs> that's that's badass, man. There's nothing better than doing a trick shot in front of people. I know. Because it's oh. it makes it so much harder, dude. Like, my nerves get to me, man. It's tough. I know, dude. I, I almost pinned a ring to the wall this year in front of everybody. Because I was hosting the trick shot competition and got called out at the end. Like, you got to come do one, man. Let's get your competition. I was like, shit, I'm not prepared. I wasn't going <laughs> to. So I was like, oh, give me a two-inch ring. I'll see if I can catch it with a four-inch blade of an axe. And I fucking launched yeah, it right back at hard. myself all three times in a row. I was like, I kept hitting it, but I didn't stick it. So it was just one of those, like, oh, I showed everyone I know what I'm doing, but I didn't win. And that's fine. I wasn't. I didn't want to win my own competition. That was kind of – Sure. Like, I wanted to – I don't know. I wanted to branch it out more. Like, you know, Adam Seladin with the Ace Jet sponsored me for it and sent me a ton of stuff to give away. And that was Badass. fantastic of those guys to do. And like, to me, it was fun because I got to bring things like the Stinger knives to the, to that world and show those guys what a no spin throw even was. And that was fun to watch yeah. some kids, you know, watch their brains break a little bit. There was just like like eleven year old kid that Max Stodden got to uh, do a ring stick after I had left. It's like no way! Please tell me you got that on video. <laughs> like that's awesome. That is badass. Was it on video? I don't know. I think so. But he's got oh. but he's got a whole bunch of pictures afterwards, and so. But we're planning yeah. on doing uh, taking our Berserker Circus thing that we're doing because he's one of my main dudes. We're planning on trying to take that around and like wherever we go and try to just. And co- help incorporate m- the more wild side of things into everywhere we go. So, well, we would love to have you guys at uh, Danger Fest next year. Oh hell yes! Consider it done, a hundred percent. Okay, man. Yeah, it's, seriously. It's starting to get pretty big. Like, I, I mean, wanna... not nearly as big as five hundred people eh, or whatever, but you that's know. too big in my opinion, man. You need like like a cell phone like system to tell people when they're playing with text messages when it gets that big, which is fine. But at the same time, it gets yeah. huge, and people are partying. I mean, it's it's fun, but it's it's a little huge. Like I think yeah. the, the one to two hundred is about perfect. But yeah, dude, I would love to come to that. I, I would have this year, but it was two weeks before the first time I was doing anything. I was hosting, and I was like, I can't break my focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, I would have. It's an experience. Yeah. It's really a beautiful experience. I really <laughs> want- every year. Every year was what I tell everybody. Every year it gets better. I don't know how. Every year it's wonderful. Every year it gets better, and it's always life changing. That's it's awesome. Just wonderful. That's exactly. We have a good time, man. Well, I want to have a good time. I'd like to come try to meet up with you guys at one, regardless. Before that, too, if we can, just because you know, like I said, I'm trying to branch out what I'm doing next year. You know, do way less, if none, of the WATL if I can, and then uh, yeah. just get out and do a ton more stuff. Just experience the throwing world for what it really is, instead of that one little corner I've been in so far. Yeah, I, I think you'd really enjoy the uh, the knife throwing tournaments. They're it's it's more like a I know this is sound cliche, but it's more like a family reunion. Cool. You know, like <laughs> we we yeah, everybody's super close. Everybody knows each other really well, and we meet up three or four times a year, and it's all basically the same same exact people. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's great, man. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, like yeah. I don't even take. My girlfriend and I don't even take vacations. Our vacations are our throws. You know, we just take a couple extra days and go camping or whatever. Yeah, and We do the same thing. My wife doesn't even really throw, so it's just kind of funny. I'm trying to get her more into it because even in the just the WATL world, people know her. Like She's one of those people who's always there with me. So like yeah. she's a face that's well, like very well recognized in that scene and doesn't even throw. And I'm like, all right, well... Just pick up a big axe and just do big axe with me, because a cute little five, two year, like you know, tiny little girl who's like all hot and stuff, throwing a giant axe, <laughs> with me, and she's like, "All right." Hell yeah. So actually, for our anniversary, I got her a really badass, like diamond finished, like uh, b- big axe made for her, and she's all excited. Badass. But I want to get her to do more knives too. I think the big ass axes, and then just go straight to no spin with her. I think that's her jam. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, it took, it took several years for my girlfriend to finally start throwing. And, uh, the past, I think three years she's been competing and she really enjoys it. She's been getting better. Dude, it's addictive. It is so much more fun than any other sport I've ever played. (laughs) And you know what, man, it's people that haven't been to a tournament. They're always like put off by it's a competition. It's not really, 
Yeah. You're competing against yourself. There's there's only uh, fast draw. Fast draw is the only thing where you're head to head. Yeah. And even then, it's it's super friendly. I mean, you know, I, I'm still gonna beat Owen every time, but. <laughs> but see, that's the kind of thing you want right there. You want yeah, the man. competition. You don't want people being yeah. assholes. Like that's not that, right. Yeah, I mean that kind of attitude I find to be very not conducive to a whole sport based around weaponry. You know, like I found the few people I've ran into that were really just kind of shitty people have gotten themselves ostracized pretty quickly. Like very fast. I've seen that happen. In the yes, it's happened before. quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, or. Or the people that are shitty, they they just talk shit on the internet and they never show up. Yeah. If they, if they were to show up, they would see that everything's cool, but they don't. They just talk shit. Yeah, I understand that one all too well. <laughs> it's like, come on now, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna sing it, bring it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Um, change gears a little bit. Do it. Do you have uh, do you have a favorite? A favorite axe that you throw you have favorite knives okay so axe wise it's always changing because i keep breaking handles and like whatnot but i gotta say my go-to if i have to just pick up an axe would be just those basic s-wing camp axes man the ones from home depot really well they're balanced so crazily that you can do so all those nonsense flips where i'm rolling it around my hand kind of like you do with your knives is because yeah. of the way they're weighted and, they're, and because they're full tang all the way down and they're actually tempered oh. halfway down, like, they're, I don't know. I really like those and they're cheap and they're easy to come by. And I take a grinder to them and, you know, thin them out a whole bunch and, you know, sure. and whatnot, customize them a little bit. But ultimately, I got to say that for trick shots, that's the way to go. And competitive wise, like a, a good buddy of mine, Gabe Grinnell, makes like the most awesome com uh, competitive throwing axes ever. So I stick with, with his work exclusively for you know competitive throwing when it comes to axes okay knives i gotta say man like currently i'm really enjoying the ace jet stingers but i ge i generally like the arrow style knives regardless sure a lot of people do yeah, exactly they're just cool uh, and then i actually got a set of these uh these ones right here these little uh splinters from uh loic yeah they're so Ooh. light and Freaking yeah, amazing. I love these. These are so cool. Yeah, it's more like a bow shuriken. Dude, it really is. It's just a tiny little version of the surgeon. And the surgeon's cool. Yeah. I got those too, but I gotta say I like these better. But uh, other than that, like rotational wise, I've kind of stuck with the very first set I've gotten, which was a uh, uh, Kim knife out of Russia. Sure. Yeah, the guy he uh, Mikhail Believ does a lot of stuff yep. with. Yeah, like I got a set of his tours, the big old thirteen inch like rotational throwers from him. Okay. And I like those, and I got these prototypes from Vendetta Blade Works that are fucking dope too. That I really love. Oh, they're, like, can you show those? Yeah, oh. check this out right here. He makes some sick uh, stuff. Yeah, he sent me a bunch of cool shit. So look at oh, this wow. guy right here. Okay, I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah, he sent me two of these, and I really like them a lot. Like these are, like I can even get a little bit of nose spin, but they like I can't do a short nose spin. Like I have to be at least four meters back. Like four to seven with one of them. Really? It's so weird, yeah. They do great half spin, really good rotational. Dude, he sent me this crazy ass chopper too. Like, oh my god, it's gigantic. Where the hell did I put it? I think it's out here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Give me one second. <laughs> sure. This thing is gigantic, dude. It's like half a sword. <laughs> All right. So holy shit. Yeah, we got a four inch handle. I think it's a, like a nine and a half inch blade, dude. But look at this thing. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. He even etched BMA into it right there, all metal looking. Badass. <laughs> I'm like, right on, brother. But yeah, this thing's insane. I love this so much. I had to throw it a few times just to do it, but uh, sure. Nothing even like I hit the gravel once with it on the first throw, just figuring out the rotation, and uh, nothing on the edge at all. It's such a great piece of metal. But yeah. This uh. Is he located close to you? I don't know where he's located, actually. Ironically, yeah. I just threw away the packaging, which is hilarious to the box, other or to that big ass chopper. Otherwise, I'd be able to tell you. But he's somewhere out east. Um, I almost want to say Pennsylvania, but if I'm wrong, please don't be mad at me, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's one of the. Uh, I don't really know, but he's amazing. Like I love his work. I, I actually want to have you uh, want to get him to make me a set of uh, arrows. I want to see what Vendetta does with those. Oh, there you go. 
his own little style. Yeah, his uh, yeah, that'll be crazy to see what he does with them. But anyway, what were you saying? Yeah, he makes <laughs> he makes some wild stuff. He does. Uh, have you messed with the uh, the Toro knives? I have. I actually have a bunch of them right here. As a matter of fact, yeah, I got uh, this guy is uh, they are large. This is humongous. This is a sixteen inch from tip to tip right there. This is wow. the Tesoro. Yeah. Looks like a freaking scimitar. I, I got yeah, it does. I, I like these. I got a couple of these guys here, which is the Muertos. They look like yeah, straight up coffin. Are huge man. These are yeah, and then I got one of those giant ass Pasito cleavers too. But yeah, Jason Kearney, he's the oh, he's one of the owners of them. He's a good friend of mine. And um, like, there's a big old thing going on in the WKTL's community with the hashtag it says "Free the Bull." Basically, like, hey, let 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 us use these knives. You know, like why yeah, not? Yeah, because. It's obvious that they designed those knives to be used in a WKTL because it has the huge guard. And they're gigantic fucking knives. I mean, they're... Yeah, and I'm sure, sure. that axe throwers can transfer right over those easier because they're so big. Yeah, I mean, have you got to throw any of these at all yet? I have not, no. Oh, I'm I have not. we can probably arrange something to get you to have a few of those to test out, most likely. That'd be cool. Um, if nothing else, I got a whole bunch of them. So, I mean, I can save you a couple and we'll give them to you with the stinger so you can just see the... Uh, the com the, just the level of difference between both, you know? It, <laughs> well, it's ridiculous. No, no comparison there. Right. Oh, this is one of my current favorite toys, too. Well, it's one of the Boyar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is one of the proto four prototypes that uh, Le Fux or whatever made for Mikhail before he made the production himself, so it's got all the etching on it. I still throw it. I don't care. It's awesome. <laughs> if yeah. I, if I damage the etching, who cares or whatever. It's meant to be thrown, not looked at, right? Right. Yeah, those are pretty sick. Well, you know, meant to be thrown, not to be looked at. Man, I, I definitely have knives that I've never thrown. Me too. They're just too rare, or they they were very sentimental to me. You know, I have several. Right. But if I was to ever make it to like, I don't know, 10,000 followers on Instagram, I might give a couple a toss, you know? Just to do it. I hear you, dude. I hear you. I got a, I got that, uh, that crazy-ass double-headed axe I won for my handstand trick shot competition. That's that's yeah. a that's a wall hanger legitimately now. I threw it once or twice. Yeah, um, and then I, I haven't picked it up in a year and a half at this point. Really, it's too nice, and it's an actual trophy. You know, it's like ah, screw it, I'll keep it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most of the ones that I have are trophy knives. Yeah. You know, and the, like the, I got those, the world championship. I, yeah, I can see those particular type of things being bit. You know, yeah, save those. You know, don't damage those. Plus, they're uh, they're mirror polished. Yeah, <laughs> one so drop, it, and you're like. It'd be a damn shame to to fuck that up, you know? right? Exactly. You know, a prototype or something, whatever. It was meant to be prototype. That means it was meant to be thrown. <laughs> so I'm throwing it. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> uh, I run out of things. Uh, bro. Pick up an. I had an old Ryobi uh, impact drill, like hooked and stuck into a target. That was, I saw that. <laughs> that was one of my yeah. favorite shots. It wasn't even a trick shot, really. Just like, hey. Pah. Well, <laughs> it kind of is to be able to throw that correctly. It's pretty difficult. Did you hold it by the battery? You know, I just held it. Yeah, I held it like you normally hold it, like a like the really? drill. And this, I just pulled my finger around, so I wasn't holding the actual trigger. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of choked down a little bit. But otherwise, okay. just threw it like normal. Took two, uh, one shot. I over-rotated, so I scooted forward about six inches and reached out a little more and stuck it right in. Like, okay, cool. And then tried it a couple more times, and that thing fell apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't meant to have well, that. Well, at least it was a impact. Ryobi. Right, exactly. A, it's it, a Walt it had already, or a, it or a Milwaukee or something. Yeah, they'd already stopped working, so I was like, screw it. This thing's trash. <laughs> Might as well have fun with it. Do you have any uh, trick shots you're working on right now? Yeah, I got anything a, new? I got a few actually. Uh, that I'm, uh, I got a few things I've been playing with in here, just because you know outside's getting cold. So inside, yeah. I'm playing with some like a lot of multiple swinging rings and things like that, and just okay that kind of thing. And uh, but trying to do different types of throws and stick them. Not just it's not just accuracy. It's like you know trying to mess around with. Uh, you know, every grip I can possibly think of and seeing how see what yeah. I can do with them. Um, working on combo shots now where you get the Rube Goldberg, uh, Goldberg effect happening. So, sure. You know, like light. So, you know, I want to light a, a match with one that then uh, lights a joint. Then I, then I pick up, start smoking while something <laughs> else starts going and then start you know, with like a ping pong ball works its way around. I got this whole idea of, to make it just absolutely ridiculous and completely, uh, like over the top performance wise, <laughs> like 
Sounds like a lot of setup. Yeah, exactly. So that's why the overall shots aren't going to be that hard. It's just going to be more about the shot. But otherwise, I'm working on a lot of distance. Uh, like I've been doing uh, over 100 foot axe throws a whole lot recently, just because oh, wow. I'm planning. Nice. On, I want to break the officially break the record and uh, but do it easily. <laughs> so I've already yeah. I've already hit over 100 feet twice and I've put it on Instagram both times. Uh, but both times it was like unverifiable because I was by myself and it's just like, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, is there an official ax? As far as I know, okay, as far as I know, everything I can find and there's, there's no, nothing about the target or size of ax, but the, uh, for Guinness, it's only 72 feet, uh, which is absurd because I think I- I- Iktoff is not- 87, isn't it? For Iktoff? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. where I start with, like start at 90. Like, like yeah. Guinness, <laughs> they, they got it wrong. Who well, cares? <laughs> well, Guinness and Iktoff, Iktoff is during a competition. So that's even more impressive. Right. Because you have to constantly outdo the person in front of you. Yeah. So doing it at home, that I don't think those are really comparable because you can just go out and do it at your own leisure. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned that because I've been wanting to break uh, throw Dini's uh, long distance what is, what knife is that? record. 101 feet nice which yeah. which uh unofficially two of my friends connor seifer and justin outlaw cooper they've both broke it it's just not like official yeah well, you, Dini, have, you have to do it in, in a controlled setting yeah sure yeah you have to have it all spaced out and show your your distances and whatnot but uh the weird thing is about Throdini's record is he owns his own record company uh. so I don't know who's verifying those. I, I'm not saying that his aren't legit. Yeah. He's a very good knife thrower, but he has like 30 of his own records within his own company. And he is a world record holder in uh, Guinness as well. So, well, you know, it's one of those things like, okay, cool. Let's just take it for what it is and beat it anyway. Fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. I, I just say, yeah, I've been wanting at this point, like uh, when I go to my target wall out to my, um, uh, Oh, <laughs> uh, we're still here. Okay. I had a low battery thing happen. I don't know. If, if, yeah, yeah. I right. think he's got to switch cameras. All right, cool. So um, I just typically, get, if I go outside of my fence, hey, there we are. If I go outside <laughs> of my fence, I, uh, I'm already over 100 feet. It's 101 feet from my fence to my target. Damn. And then if I go to my sidewalk, it's 123 feet. So I just typically, wow. I usually just typically start at the sidewalk. And I've stuck several of them, but like I'm, I'm trying to get one of my buddies who's a racing drone operator to actually get it to time with me so he can Ooh. chase the axe the whole way. Like, oh, that'd be sick. Wouldn't that be dope? Uh, that's kind of, that's one of the things be... I'm working on right there. But yeah. <laughs> like, not that'd only, be tough, man. Yeah, not only break the record, but break it in this like weirdly overproduced fashion. That would be awesome. Yeah, even better. Yeah. <laughs> Just shows a little confidence yeah, that way. But yeah, working on... Uh, for being in my late forties and having all this gray hair, I'm still working on more acrobatic type of things as well. Yeah. I'm also trying to take a, the whole concept of like, I got all these. I guess you'd call them trick shot disciples because, like you're saying, once people start doing something, other people start doing it. So there's all these hatchet trick shot people out there now, and it's like, okay, cool. I'm still like the ten steps ahead of most of you. But I mean, I'm, tur- I'm turbo willing to help any of you who ever hit me up with questions. But yeah. for fun, I'm just going to start doing everything with a big axe now. Like, why not? Let's just recreate all this stuff with a way bigger axe, you know? Yeah. And so, like, like that's a whole different animal. It is. The thing's five, you know, you got five pounds of weight, like, and you're swinging it around. Yeah. It's like it takes a lot of power and finesse, not just finesse, you know? Sure. Both. Like yeah. when I caught that can last year with a double bit, it was one of those like it took me about an hour, and it was one of those when I got it, I was like, "Fuck yes! Oh my god, <laughs> it was so <laughs> hard." <laughs> Just, Man, I have very little experience throwing big axes. Oh, dude, I have like a medium sized double bit that my friend Oki gave me. Yeah, and I don't throw it a whole lot. Cause it's like an antique yeah. and plus it just destroys my targets. That's it. Destroys That's why them. I have such a giant wall. I got ones that I only throw big axes at and I got ones okay. that I only throw knives at. And then if I'm doing nonsense trick shots, it's just wherever the hell it sticks, it sticks. But like, sure. you know, like, tracking the can or yeah, whatever. Exactly. And then, but so, but yeah, like ultimately everything out there, it's it, sure it's, you know, just a pile of stuff, but it, like it all kind of serves a purpose. So like, 
I don't know. I'm working on setting up like kind of like a what, what I call axe golf, but basically it's frisbee golf with axes and knives, and you have all these different targets set up. Well, I have a I have a pretty big ass piece of land. I got about a third of an acre in downtown Denver, and so I'm setting up targets. Oh, you're up. in the city? Yeah, I'm in the city. Oh, I could never tell. Yeah, so I, I try to make sure to keep those up angles on purpose. <laughs> we don't oh, see okay, a lot, of, see yeah. a lot yeah. of what's going on, you know. Uh-uh. And um, Plus, it makes everything kind of seem bigger. I don't know. It's one of those it does. trick. But um, yeah, we uh, I'm at the point now where I'm setting up different targets all over the yard, almost like a croquet course too. Like you throw axe here, then you pick it up, and you got knife to here. Okay, then you got a shikram out that way, and it's like, why not? Like making a silly game out of it. It's like that's cool. It's like making an instinctive course, except for all the targets are totally different. Like some of them are just humongous logs sticking straight out of the ground, so they're more round instead of instead of being a. Those in, are difficult. Yeah. yeah, so you actually have to hit the middle of it, otherwise things go straight plain, on. Yeah, yeah, otherwise things go flying off the side, and it's, yeah, there's a couple of dumb things. And yeah, I, like my neighbors at first were like, "What the hell?" And now they all come over and they're all wanting to throw with me and just hang yeah. out. So yeah, yeah same. Yeah, I don't ever have any problems with my neighbors or the police. They're, <laughs> they're always like, hey, what's up? Can we come throw with you? I, I don't <laughs> usually. Yeah. Like, I've hey, had- Alex, how much time we got left? We got 56 minutes. Okay. So so we got just a few minutes left. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, I, I just have a lot of questions for you because I'm not involved in the axe throwing. And axe and, axe and tomahawk are similar but we go, we go way further back. Yeah. So what I wanted to particularly ask is about the Canadian flick. Okay. Straightforward throwing. Is that something that you learned or is that the way that you throw? And I, I understand that why it's like dart throwing. You want everything yeah. to be straight in line. And yeah. I understand that yeah. almost no one in the tomahawk world does that because we're throwing back to 30 feet. Yeah. And I don't so think that that flick I can, would necessarily work. I can, I've adapted it a little bit for more distance because I push with my feet a lot. Like I step. So it's more of a punch for me, you know, as opposed to a okay. flick. So I, I like to think of it as like the whole concept of the Bruce Lee one inch punch. Like you're putting a ton of power from here to there. Right. Like okay. you, I don't wind up a lot, but that being said, it was something that I learned. And I'm still, I don't really 100% agree with that style of throwing. The people, there are people who are really good at it, but it doesn't adapt to anything else. So I started off throwing, honestly, when I was goofing off at like a pitcher's mound. Like that's what I was doing, 60 feet. And so for me, it was a big wind up, just huck it, right? And once I learned yeah. that you could control like the waiver of it better by k- keeping your elbow in, and the, like I sort of adapted parts of the Canadian flick but yeah. not so much. I look, I, if anything, I, I try to keep my, uh, treat my arm more like the way that uh, archers do, right? Like I'm, I try to look, be looking down it and then try to pull as much power into that as I possibly can. So okay. it's not, I'm not just flicking with my, with my forearm, my wrist and my tricep at all, like they, they're doing, yeah. you know? I'm like just trying to sort of put that ax straight through the target because no, no, I totally, yeah. I totally understand it, and it and it works. And you're a very good example because, especially like was two days ago, you did the uh, Robin Hooded two into the same handle. Yeah, and that's that was very impressive because you're able to line everything up, and it just looked really nonchalant. I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a for me, it's a hybrid of a lot of different types of throwing, I guess. Because again, sometimes I think about it. I was a basketball player for a long time, so I bring a, I bring elements okay. of a jump shot in where you keep that elbow straight down. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, I bring, I, so I bring, I always, when I try to teach people, at least with axes, because you're using a lot of like the catapulting motion, they try to tell yeah. you, keep your elbow in. Because if you pull your elbow out, the axe comes out at an angle and you're chopping across grains or whatever, you know? And like, yeah. and plus, you're not going to be able to aim for shit. So it's a matter of just point your elbow where you want it to where you want the axe to go, then point your hand where you want the axe to go. And that generally works for me with everything. Like with no spin, not so much because I don't bring it up the same same way. But with half spin, right, I, right. I bring it straight up, point my elbow, then point my hand, and it just goes right where I want it to. That's a good point you brought up with the uh, being vertical because if you guys are throwing it at vertical boards, yeah, exactly, and we're throwing it uh, log grounds or end grain, so yeah. it doesn't matter which angle you hit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I throw at log grounds all the time at home, but I still find that 
it, it, for me, consistency wise, keep trying to keep those variables the same every time helps. So like keeping my elbow tucked in, regardless of what I'm throwing or what I'm throwing at, just helps with my accuracy. That's all. Okay. And like for me, that's just something I developed. You know, everyone's got different styles. I mean, look at Loic, dude. I don't even know. I understand how the hell he throws like that. He's an animal, dude. It's like he an turned animal. his arm into just a straight up trebuchet. Like, <laughs> like how the hell it's, does he do that? <laughs> yeah, he's been studying baseball a lot. Yeah, pitching. and I find I that, that typically him. people who play baseball are bad at throwing, like axes at least, because they want to bring their elbow really? up. They want to twist their core, so they can't throw in a straight well, line. Because that's the first. Because it goes that's the first thing. Whenever I'm teaching yeah. someone, I say, "Have you played baseball before?" And if they say yes. That at least gives me a little bit of foundation to work from. That's they're, fair. Yeah. They're usually easier to be able to because you know, teaching someone that's never thrown something before, that's difficult. Yeah, I can, I can, I can agree because once he told me that when people come over to my range, that's I've been asking them that, yeah. and I found that people that didn't play sports in school, they're a lot harder to it's, teach. It, they can get it, but that's it's just fine. more difficult. I find that girls who have never played sports are easier to teach than boys who have never played sports. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my... Were they easier to follow in directions? I also find that when people are on first dates, axe throwing, the girl's 90% of the time better than the guy because they, really? act, they actually listen to instructions and the guys are just trying to throw hard and impress the girls. Yeah, <laughs> so, a little bit of ego thing. I, I have found that, they, yeah, like it's, I don't know what it is. And then for some reason, the people I teach that like have come across the easiest ever are people who play golf and pole dancers and what yeah exactly then here follow my train of logic here right so at least with axes when you when you're throwing something yeah you got all the weight at the end so you're using this as a club and you're bringing the weight up and over same thing with the yeah. golf club but you're going underneath so those guys at least understand what they're doing right where someone th who throws a ball you have all that weight and that center of gravity in your hand whereas with an axe it's above your hand so it translates better to a golfer. Pole dancers just un understand centrifugal motion, and they understand like the physics of the way a body moves. Oh, that's so when you tell when you well, and the reason I know them specifically is that's the type of dancers that my wife and all her friends are, and so that's you know <laughs> I've worked with them a lot, and it's like they all get it hella fast because like you tell huh. them to correct something in their body posture, and they understand what they what you're what you're talking about, and they just do it, and oh. bam, like huh, sweet. They're just in, in tune with their own body. That's then, exactly huh? what it is, you know. And other people who play other sports want to try to bring their sport into it. Like Correct. for me, baseball yeah. players, it, with the axe throwing specifically, um, it, it's always a pain in the ass because, like I said, that the, they're used to holding the center of gravity in their palm, and that's not the same case. So they tend to tend to throw where their handle is, where they're holding their handle will hit the bullseye, but the axe will be up higher. And it's just like, oh, sure. God, okay, I have to untrain you a little bit now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They get the fundamentals of throwing very fast, but they get, they don't understand the aiming very well. <laughs> so, gotcha. Yeah, but, you know, they're also not used to throwing things from 12 feet away. <laughs> very true. <laughs> hey, man, we're, uh, we're coming up on an hour here. Um, thank you so much for doing this, man. I would it's love really to nice do it again you. if you ever want we, to continue we, this. I'm all about it. Oh, man, that'd be great. We'd love to have you back on again. And uh, uh -huh. this is nice to get you to know you a little bit better. I know we converse on Instagram quite a bit, but we never had a face-to-face, -face, so yeah. this was nice. This is this has been fantastic. It's been really nice to get to know the two of you guys. <laughs> so Hell yeah. Right Thanks, on. Owen, for doing this with yeah, us. Yeah, it's been fun. And uh, keep doing fun. what you're doing, man, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Peace. You guys as well. Later. <laughs>